Hello everyone and welcome to the first video uh, in this top-down 2D shooter tutorial that we're going to be making in Godot. Um, my name is Joe and I'm really excited uh, to get moving forward with this and, and to make something cool. Uh, so just as an overview of what we're going to actually be making, um, my idea for this series is going to be kind of a walkthrough on how to make a top-down shooter uh, in 2D. Now, there's a lot of similar tutorials or resources for games like this that you can find out there. Typically, a lot of them center around either being some kind of like a zombie defense game, you know, or uh, potentially being uh, like an infinite scroller type of shooter. Um, and those are awesome. Uh, what I kind of want to do, just to kind of give another outlet to that, is make more of a traditional uh, like military style shooter, kind of a more capture the flag or capturing bases kind of thing. Um, uh, and I think that's really gonna be cool. It'll let us get into some interesting like AI and pathfinding, wind conditions, different types of game modes, and just kind of interesting things like that that you might not get in your typical uh, top-down shooter tutorial. So I'm really excited. I think it's gonna be awesome. And you can always apply so many of the things we do uh, in this to many other different types of games. And I think especially, you know, like shooting mechanics or AI, like those are things that you're gonna learn and be able to apply to any type of game that you make. So that's just kind of the idea. If you've ever played the game Running With Rifles, kind of a similar feel, but more of a top-down thing, I think that's a good uh, just kind of base of what we're going to be going for. So yeah, I hope you're excited. I hope you will stick around. Um, kind of just an overview of all the things that we're going to cover. Um, so first, this is going to be pretty beginner-friendly. Um, I'm going to assume general knowledge of programming and also some pretty basic Godot knowledge, like uh, done the official tutorial, the Dodge the Creeps tutorial. Like if you've gone that far, you're you're totally good. I can link to that tutorial in the description, but basically like you've opened the editor before, you kind of know some of the terminology. But besides that, it'll be super beginner friendly. If you've never used uh, Godot before, that's totally fine um, or never really used it. Um, I'll explain, you know, all the nodes we're using. Uh, how I'm doing things, try and just give step-by-step -step instructions for everything. So it should be a really good learning experience whether you've used Godot pretty pretty heavily or it's just something that's totally new to you. Uh, another thing that I want to do um, is spend a lot of time talking about project architecture and organization, how to structure your code, how to structure your directories, you know, just like how to do things, best practices and things like that. I think that especially if you are a hobbyist or an indie game dev and you're working solo or trying it out for the first time, those are things that are really easy to get overwhelmed with and get kind of discouraged and just not feel like, you know, you know what to do. And um, I do software development uh, professionally full-time, so those are things that really get me excited, like how do we organize this? How do we structure this now so that it'll be the easiest to work with moving forward? And so I really want to spend a lot of time talking about that because when I first got into game dev, those were things that kind of held me back. You know, you get that analysis paralysis. So just things that I want to make sure we focus on to kind of help, um, you know, deal with some of the anxiety or just kind of worry about those issues that can creep in when you're just getting started. So I hope that sounds like a good plan. Um, I'm excited to get started. Uh, in this first video, we're really just going to set the project up and we're going to get like our basic character sprite. So right now I've got Godot 3.2.1 installed and uh, you're going to want to do the same thing real quick. I'm going to drag a finder window over here. Um, so what I did is I opened Godot and I just created a new project. I called it top down shooter tutorial. You can call it whatever you want. And I'm going to drag over here. Um, I've also downloaded the asset pack from Kenny the top-down shooter. Um, if you don't know Kenny, he releases a ton of awesome free open source artwork, or not open source, but free to use artwork online. Um, highly recommend. It's great for prototyping. Uh, so I've downloaded some stuff from him, and I've got a copy of it right here, so I'm just going to copy this real quick. Uh, before I do that though, I'm going to come in here to our empty project, click on this icon.png file that comes with a Godot project, and I'm going to come up to the import settings up here. And I'm actually going to change uh, the import settings to be 2D pixel. And I'm going to set this as the default for textures. So what I'm doing here is basically making it so that 
by default, anytime that I bring in a texture to Godot, it's going to import it as a 2D pixel or 2D pixel texture. And the reason we want that, at least at the start here, is because we're not using really nice high definition textures. We're not using things that need a filter, kind of a blur, or any any like uh, effects applied to it. We just want the pixels themselves to be displayed. So I'm gonna, again, you just hit this 2D pixel and that will do it for the current file you have. But I also wanna uh, hit 2D pixel and then set it as the default for texture. And then if I hit re-import, it'll re-import it. We're not actually gonna use this icon.png, but I wanted to set that before I import all of the Kenny assets so that they will all be imported as pixel art. So with that, let me pop open this finder window. So I already copied this top down shooter. I'll do it again just to be safe. Come back into, uh, this is the folder I made. So we have this top down shooter tutorial folder. This is you know the folder that I created the project in. I'm gonna create a new folder in here. I'm just gonna call it assets. Typically, I like to co-locate uh, assets like graphics or sounds with the things that are going to use it. So, you know, if you've got a soldier character, for example, wherever you define the script and the scene, you would put the artwork and the sounds for it as well right there. It just makes it easier to find things. But for now, I'm just going to have this like, you know, basically asset dump folder where you can just put stuff in. So I'm going to paste uh, this in there. So we'll see we have top down shooter. Great. So now if I click back in Godot, you'll see it's going to import all of these. And I'll just take a second. Do, 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 do. And then once this is done, then I can come over here and go back into the scene tab. So now we've got all the resources we need, basically. Um, we are good to go to start making things. Um, I'm going to do one more thing real quick, actually. Uh, uh, no, I'll do that in a second. So the first thing we need to do is just create a scene, right? So again, uh, just the basic overview. Um, in Godot, everything is a scene. Sometimes scenes are just one node. Sometimes scenes are a collection of nodes, like a tree of nodes. Um, so we'll just make a scene here. This is gonna be our main scene. So I'm gonna call it that. So let's call it main. And, uh, oh, I'm gonna save that. I'll just save it in our root directory right now. And um, the hotkey to run your project or run your main scene is command B. I, I don't quite know what it is in Windows, it's probably control B, but if I hit command B, I'll run the project and it'll say there's no main scene defined. So I'm just gonna hit select and set it to be our main scene. So now we're gonna run it. And obviously there's nothing there, so it's just a blank screen, but we have a, uh, a game that we can run now, which is great. Baby steps. So now that we have that, one thing I wanna do, um, if you notice, uh, actually we'll get to that in a sec. So I'm gonna come over here um, and come into our project settings and I'll come down to rendering and then environment or quality sorry uh, actually I think I think I'm still on the wrong one. Oh boy there we go config no network run display oh my gosh Ooh, it's early so we're gonna leave these are the settings for how your like your what your game's display size is gonna be um, or your window size. We're gonna keep these default width and height settings for now. We will most definitely change those later, but we'll just keep those. And I'm gonna come down to the bottom and change our mode here uh, to be 2D. This is our stretch mode. And so what this means is that as you resize your window, it's going to um, not keep things the same size. Like it will expand all of your things as your window increases, which will be good. So we can try and test, you know, moving our window size. So just a first step to get that out of the way. Okay, and now with that, I think we are ready to add our player character. Um, I don't think we're gonna get to any movement or anything in this one, but we're just gonna add a sprite, we're gonna set it up, and then in the next video, we can really get into how we control that character, how we move it around, and uh, actually get something that we can play. So, the first thing we need to do is actually add a player character. So, I'm gonna make our character a kinematic body 2D. Um, so you might be familiar with that term, but basically there's three types of physics bodies um, in Godot. There's a static body, uh, a rigid body, and a kinematic body. So all of them interact with the physics engine. Uh, a rigid body is totally controlled by physics. So it's like you move it and affect it by applying forces and acceleration, um, just like in real life and other things when it collides, they will be pushed or pulled. Um, so if you have like, you know, a racing game or 
uh, a game where there's wind or something or you want to do like you know rolling physics like there's so many types of, of games or things you'd want where you'd actually want the full like physics simulation run then on the other end there's a static body which is for things that are not going to move um there's a big performance increase to using static bodies because the engine assumes that their position won't change really so static bodies are things where you want something that can be collided into and is something in the world that other things should interact with but isn't actually going to move itself it's static like the name implies and then somewhere in between is the kinematic body and kinematic bodies are really good for things that are going to move around but not by physics forces explicitly it's things that you want to control by code which is exactly what we want to do for our player character um, we want to have some pretty fine-grained control over how exactly the player is going to move around and so with that we're going to add a kinematic body 2d um, i'm going to call this player so just rename it to oops player and then i'm going to start adding uh, one node now which will be a sprite so that we can actually give some artwork to our character so i have this sprite which is a child of the player which is a child of our main scene and now within the sprite to actually add a texture to it i'm going to open our assets folder down here open top down shooter and i'm going to come to sprite sheet this directory that comes in the kenny assets and i'm going to find the sprite sheet character file and just drag it right over into the texture uh, drop down of the sprite and what this will do is it'll set a texture for our sprite which is great except for the fact that we have the entire sprite sheet here and we only want one character so what we want to do is uh, give this a region we don't want to use the whole texture we just want to use a small region so I can come right into here on our sprite and hit the region button and I can just hit region enabled and it will actually give it a texture region and so what I can do is uh, open this texture region button that will pop up down here come over into here and now it'll actually let me select which part or which region of our texture I want to use uh, so one thing I'm gonna do is just turn on grid snap this will just give nice grid lines around here and I'm gonna come down here so this is uh, this is the character we want to use right here we'll just use a generic soldier and you'll notice that using the grid lines as they are right now I can't actually get the totality of the character like there's a little bit of the arm that's out here so what I can do is make our grid lines a little bit more fine-grained by changing the step here so I'm gonna change these to be eight pixels uh, actually let's just do let's just do four I think I'll need to anyway okay so I change it to four and now you can see I can go right here and I won't get you know any of the next character but I've still got our character and I can bring uh it looks like there's a little bit of the gun right there so I think I'll just leave uh, no I think we're good I'll just leave it this is good so now we have a texture uh, that's just our character and we can see on the screen up here that it actually works now we've just got the player character which is awesome so now that's how you can add a texture to a sprite how you can select uh, just the specific part of it you want and now what we need to do is actually define and tell the physics engine for the sake of collisions um, what space this player takes because we can see right here well it takes like you know this but the physics engine doesn't know that it can't read that just from the sprite so I'll select our player and I'll hit add and I will add a collision shape 2d and you'll notice right now before I add this that there's this little warning icon by the player and what that warning is is it's basically saying hey you have a, a physics body but there's no collision shape to it which is exactly the problem we're gonna fix right now so I'll hit create and we'll have a collision shape and I will come over here to shape and uh, I think we'll just do a rectangle shape for now so I added a rectangle shape to you you'll notice that warning is gone which is great um, our rectangle is a little small so we're gonna need to make it a little bit bigger before I do that though I'm gonna similar to what we were doing with the texture region turn on grid snapping up here um, again just to get some nice grid lines and then when I move stuff around it'll snap to the grid um, so let me move this here and let's just make this fit our player uh, I think that's good I don't really want the gun to be totally included in the collision I really just want it to be the player itself and I think that will just make it feel better you know if you've got multiple characters on the screen 
Uh, you know, we might change this to be a circle collision shape eventually, but this is totally fine for now, just a rectangle. So with that, I think we're good. And now what I can do is if I start our game, um, we should see our character. Uh, he's obviously a little bit out of the screen, but what I can do is just grab this and I can go to move mode. And then just if I have the player selected, just drag um, the player in any child nodes and move it over here. So now when I hit command B, we'll see our player right there, which is great. So we have a great start here. I think this is pretty much all the stuff I wanted to get done in this video. We've created our project. We've uh, added some of the settings we need just to make sure it appears correctly. We've added a character, added a collision shape. We added the graphics and next video, we're pretty much ready to dump or to jump in and get movement working and get a bunch of other cool stuff going. So yeah, I think this is a, a good, a good place to stop for this one. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Um, feel free to leave any feedback or suggestions or places you want to see this go in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.